I'm Nick Clark reporting from the United Arab Emirates on the extraordinary market in sharks fished from the Gulf that threatens the very existence of a predator that's been around for hundreds of millions of years. They are often the subject of nightmarish movies. They are feared by many of us, but perhaps it's the sharks who should be living in fear of humans. The very existence of many species is being threatened because of a thirst for shark fin soup. United Arab Emirates supplies nearly 10% of the world's shark fins, mainly to Hong Kong and China. Nick Clark has more. In the restaurants of Hong Kong and China, the dish that's growing in popularity, shark fin soup, an expensive delicacy that growing Chinese wealth is enabling more and more people to afford. Skinned and dried shark fins lined up in stores, thousands of them, each one worth a small fortune, but putting untold strain on a dwindling shark population. <laughs> Dubai fish market in the United Arab Emirates and a major world hub for shark fin. Here, you don't have to look far to see the extent of the problem, mainly caught in the deep waters between Oman and Iran. Black tip sharks, carpet sharks, lemon sharks, juveniles by the barrow load. That is uh, cut there, meat separate, this separate, this is uh, very costly. One, one kg, 200, this one, cutting. And meat, one, one kilo, 15 dirham, meat. Okay. meat. Uh, we've got probably around three or four generations here of sharks on this slab alone. So it just so, shows how easy it is to interrupt the, the whole reproductive cycle and the natural order of, of, uh, of, of life on the reef. There was plenty more to come. First this, the huge dorsal fin of a whale shark. So trade is already restricted by law. By law on this. In these, in, this, yeah. in whale shark fins. Yeah, so it's a case here of already, you know, an, an example of an infringement. How much would something like this be worth? Well, to them here at this end of the market, around three to 4,000 dirhams, so we're talking about $1,000, but when it gets to Hong Kong or Singapore, it can go as high as $10,500. So when that gets dried out, it, um, it will probably end up in a uh, glass case or somewhere inside a restaurant. So I thought that by now, um, you know, the UAE was fully on board the, uh, the whole uh, CITES uh, issues. And then this, the hustle and bustle of the late afternoon delivery, the really big catch. Dozens and dozens of adult sharks of all kinds. Some are pregnant mothers. Most will be definned and then disposed of. You know, it's quite incredible. And this is just one random day at Dubai Fish Market. And if you needed any convincing that sharks are under threat at all, you need look no further than this. And just take a look over here. You've got the, the sellers, the fishermen, and the agents all bartering away. They haggle over the price, which rises week by week as shark numbers diminish. Despite appearances, this is a shadow of how things used to be. 80% of the stock they already destroyed. Every day there would be hundreds and hundreds of sharks here. Thousands of sharks, olden days, thousands of sharks. Now it's nearly gone. Gone, 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 gone. Ah, and so. It is hoped fishing and trading for just four endangered species of shark will be banned, but even that will be hard to police. A more radical move would be to make the shark fin trade itself totally illegal. Either way, unless action is taken soon, it may all become irrelevant. Nick Clark, Al Jazeera, the United Arab Emirates. So far, just three species of shark are actually protected under the UN's Convention on International Trade in endangered species, CITES. That includes uh, this fellow here, the whale shark, uh, as well as white and basking sharks as well. But as we saw in Nick's report, the demand for shark fins in Asia is absolutely soaring. It is thought that 73 million sharks are killed every year just for their fins. And over the coming two weeks, a decision will be made on whether to add eight more shark species to that CITES list. That's happening at the CITES conference here in Doha, from where Elizabeth Griffin joins us. She's fisheries campaign manager, marine wildlife scientist with OCEANA, an international organisation which campaigns to protect the world's oceans. Thank you for your time. Here's the issue that I see. You've got huge demand for shark fin soup, and you've got people, as we've seen in our reports today and yesterday, 
who are making a living from this. Now, as long as people are willing to pay the money and the demand is there, how are you going to break this cycle? Well, one good way to break that cycle is through this meeting that we're at now. If we can get these additional eight species of sharks protected, it will help to ensure stable shark populations around the world, which will provide a stable source of shark fins for years to come. I don't want to be pessimistic with you, but do, do you truly believe that will work, putting them on an endangered list? Because, again, it, when it comes down to things like trade and money and people making a livelihood, they're going to do it, aren't they? Well, the great thing about sharks is there are hundreds of different species of sharks out there, and there are different populations all over the world with different statuses. And so there's some populations that are really in trouble and have really been wiped out, and others that are a little more healthy. And what this convention will do is allow fishing to continue from those healthier populations. And it's not a trade ban. It regulates trade to make sure that we have healthy shark populations. And what so it's not that all shark fins are going to disappear. Right. What sort of, sorry to interrupt you. What sort of commitments are you getting from people there at CITES? People are really starting to realize that something needs to be done, and there's a growing momentum towards putting these eight species on the CITES convention. We really are hopeful that this will turn out well for the sharks. One of the other issues I see is that, and, and it's been highlighted out in our reports, our reports have come from uh, places like Oman, uh, United Arab Emirates, where you've got uh, fishermen who are just trying to scratch out a living there. Is there a way to work with them, if I can put it that way, so that they have a sustainable fishing career or, or, uh, as well? It's the wrong word I'm using here, but they can sustainably fish as well and we can protect species. Yes, well, the first thing to note is that this convention is all about international trade. So fishermen would still be able to fish for sharks and land them and sell them in their own country. So it's not going to take away people's fishing livelihood. It's just going to help control the international trade. It's also important to remember that if these fishermen catch too many sharks now, sharks are really slow growing and take a long time to reach adulthood and then do not reproduce very many pups. So if they fish too heavily for them now, the sharks will be gone anyway and there won't be a future in shark fishing. So we need to make sure we manage these fisheries carefully to make sure that sharks are around for decades to come. Elizabeth Griffin joining us from the CITES conference there in Doha. Thanks very much for your time.